the EDL's position prior to Joe Biden getting elected when it came to Ukraine was the same as most of the Western world. Namely that there is a dominant battalion in, the, in Ukraine called the Azov Battalion that is a neo-Nazi group, said the ADL. It was a law in the United States that no money or training could go to anything in Ukraine that would even get near the Azov Battalion because to do so would be to fund and arm Nazis. Facebook had a policy prior to the war in Ukraine that said it is prohibited to praise hate groups. And one of the hate groups that you were not allowed to praise was the Azov Battalion because they were deemed a hate group in the West. And the ADL was one of the groups leading the way in getting the Azov Battalion proclaimed to be that. Soon as Joe Biden made it a priority to flood Ukraine with arms and weapons and therefore to flood the Azov Battalion with arms and weapons, the ADL suddenly stopped talking about the Azov Battalion as a neo-Nazi group and refuses to say anything about the fact that Joe Biden is arming actual Nazis in Ukraine. So even when it comes to anti-Semitism or arming neo-Nazis, the ADL prioritizes their partisan loyalties above what is supposed to be the core mission of their group. One Jewish news outlet, The Forward, noticed this, and in July of this year, just a couple of weeks ago, posted an article asking, quote, does Ukraine really have a neo-Nazi problem? U.S. officials won't say. Quote, some Jewish leaders have pulled back their criticisms of the Azov Brigade since Russia's invasion. So they used to, these Jewish groups did, warn of the Azov Battalion, and now suddenly they're silent because Joe Biden needs them to be silent so he can arm Ukraine in the Azov Battalion. Quote, in his existential struggle against Russian invaders, Ukraine, a pro-Western democracy, you can see already all these phrases, shows you that the forward is completely on board with the Biden administration's view. In its existential struggle against Russian invaders, Ukraine, a pro-Western democracy, has elevated some problematic heroes with fascist origins. And its allies, including, a Jewish, including Jewish leaders and liberal politicians, usually on guard against such forces, have largely downplayed or denied this phenomenon. At least 13 members of Congress, for example, have met with Azov Brigade members and their spouses over the last nine months, despite Congress having banned U.S. funding for the unit since 2018 because of its extremist roots. In June, an Azov delegation met with a leader of Human Rights Watch, a watchdog group that in 2015 reported, quote, numerous allegations of unlawful detention and the use of torture by the unit. Azov members have also been welcomed twice at Stanford University, where they were lauded by former U.S. Ambassador to Russia Michael McFaul and the noted political scientist Francis Fukuyama, who later told the news website SFGate that he viewed them as, quote, heroes. And the Anti-Defamation League, the world's premier anti-Semitism watchdog, has softened its assessment of the group since Russia's invasion. The Azov Brigade was established by far-right Ukrainian nationalists in 2014 in response to Russia's invasion of Crimea. It started as a volunteer civil military founded by Andrei Beletsky, a neo-Nazi, who wrote in a 2010 manifesto that Ukraine's mission was, quote, to lead the white peoples of the world in the last crusade for their existence, a crusade against the subhumanity led by the Semites. Boletsky, who is now 44, left Azov in 2016 when he was elected to parliament, where he served until 2019. He now leads a right-wing political movement called the Azov Movement, which has its own political paramilitary force known as the National Militia with an estimated 20,000 volunteers. Many of the Azov Brigade's current senior commanders come from Boletsky's original group and remain tied to him politically. Today, the brigade itself has an estimated 2,500 active soldiers with affiliated units that, taken together, have about 5,000. Two of the leading U.S. groups fighting anti-Semitism, the Simon Wiesenthal Center and the ADLU, are also at loggerheads in their views of the Azov Brigade and the lionization of Stepan Bandera. 
Efraim Zorov, who coordinates Nazi war crimes research at the Weizenthal Center, criticized Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky for failing to call out the brigade's continued use of a Nazi-inspired insignia and ongoing ties to right-wing radicals. Quote, I can appreciate that he wants to keep these men fighting. They're good fighters, Zorov said. But you must put your foot down. If you want to be a democracy, you don't walk around with Nazi symbols. Embracing the Azov Brigade and Bandera, quote, only feeds Putin's lies that Ukraine is a Nazi country, Zorov added. It's not a Nazi country. It's a country that glorifies murderous Nazi collaborators, though. I don't know. That distinction seems pretty thin and trivial to me. That I... I want to see this, uh, this distinction he's drawing of the Simon of a little thinner. Embracing the Azov Brigade and Bandera, quote, only feeds Putin lies that Ukraine is a Nazi country, he said. It's not a Nazi country. It's a country that glorifies murderous Nazi collaborators, though. I don't know. That doesn't seem very comforting to me. Oh, don't worry. They're not a Nazi country. They are, though, a country that glorifies Nazi collaborators. Murderous Nazi collaborators, in fact. They're a country that calls as heroes people who walk around with Nazi insignia on their uniforms. Don't worry, though. They're not a Nazi group. They're not a Nazi country. Now, here is what, that's just the kind of narrative the, ADF is, the ADL is determined to avoid. So remember, before the war in Russia, just to give you a sense for how easily manipulated these terms are, like anti-Semitism accusations, the ADL's position was the Azov Battalion is a neo-Nazi group and a very dangerous one at that. When asked why they're not following the Simon Wiesenthal Center in warning that it's wrong to arm the Azov Battalion and to criticize the Ukrainian government for lauding them and glorifying them, here's what the ADL said, quote, we need to keep priorities straight. Said Andrew Sturlitiv, the group's director for U European affairs. I, I thought the priority of the ADL was to combat Nazis. Apparently not, though. They're saying the reason we're not calling out the Azov group, even though they're no Nazis, is because we need to keep our priorities straight. Well, what are those priorities that would allow you to overlook the funding and arming by the United States government of neo-Nazis? Quote, we are not going to contribute to Russian propaganda that is aimed at lowering American political support for Ukraine just because we see a few guys with worrying arm patches. The actual threat posed by Ukraine's far right, he said, was, quote, negligible. The ADL's assessment of Azov has undergone a profound shift since the start of the current war in Ukraine. Back in 2019, the group described the Azov Battalion in a report as, quote, a Ukrainian extremist group and militia that, quote, has ties to neo-Nazis in Ukraine as well as white supremacists worldwide. A week after Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, the ADL described Azov as, quote, the Ukrainian National Guard unit with explicit neo-Nazi ties. But by November, the ADL told a reporter for a pro-Russian news outlet called Grey Zone, that was the media outlet just banned by GoFundMe, without explanation, that the Center on Extremism, quote, does not see the Azov regime as the far-right group it once was. Oh, these Nazis, they reformed overnight. Because now the Biden administration and the Democratic Party, which the ADL actually serves, that's their real mission, not combating anti-Semitism, now wants to arm them. So you know what? Now we're going to trivialize and say, oh, it's just a few guys running around with some worrying arm patches. We're not going to call them out and object to the funding of neo-Nazi groups in Ukraine because doing so might undermine the Biden administration's efforts to keep the public on their side in the war in Ukraine. That's their real goal. Do you understand that? It's to promote and protect Joe Biden and the Democratic Party. That's who wants to control the permissible balance of our political speech in the United States based on the lie, the fraud, that what they're really about is combating anti-Semitism. Sirlovich said the Center on Extremism's most recent assessment is that, quote, it is impossible to say how many extremists might still remain with the Azov unit, but it would certainly be far fewer than it had in the past. Can you imagine the ADL in any other context where doing so was not necessary to help Joe Biden and the Democratic Party being this dismissive about a group that just a year earlier it warned were serious neo-Nazis. Look at what the ADL is willing to do to its own supposed primary mission. Turn it into a parody, a joke. 
because they can no longer now warn about neo-Nazis in Ukraine because that contradicts the Joe Biden and uh, White House position. Quote, the ADL's equivocal stance goes beyond Azov. In a June New York Times article about some Ukrainian soldiers' use of neo-Nazi-derived symbols on their uniforms, an ADL spokesman did not express outrage. A Ukrainian soldier with a patch containing the Totenkopf symbol, which was posted by Ukrainian officials to Twitter but later deleted. The photo. Instead, discussing one photo, the article highlighted a soldier with a skull and crossbones patch known as the Totenkopf, which was famously adopted by the Nazi SS. The ADL official said he could not, quote, make an inference about the wearer. Oh, look, just because he has a like well-known Nazi SS symbol doesn't mean I'm going to make judgments about his politics or his character. Quote, the soldier's specific Totenkopf, said the spokesman, appeared to be merchandise of a British neo-folk band called Death in June. The band's name memorializes a June 1934 event known as, quote, the, Light of the, the Night of the Long Knives, in which Hitler executed leaders of the Nazi party who helped bring him to power. Do you believe the ADL has anything to do with combating anti-Semitism? Is that the action of a group that does? I actually think that neo-Nazis are pretty bad. And that's one of the reasons, among many, from the start I've been concerned about the United States flooding Ukraine with lethal weapons and money. Because I know that it's going to strengthen real deal Nazis. The ADL sees people in the United States with MAGA hats on and wants them removed from the internet and kicked out of the financial system and censored from speaking. And then they see real deal Nazis in Ukraine who they used to vehemently denounce and warn about and the minute it becomes politically disadvantageous to the Biden White House for them to continue to warn about neo-Nazis, something you would expect a genuine anti, a group come genuinely combating anti-Semitism to do, they immediately turn around and start making excuses. Oh, that guy probably, yes, he has a neo-Nazi patch on, but it's not like that proves anything. Or, oh, it's just a bunch of guys running around with some worrying patches. We're not going to call that out. The Biden administration needs public opinion on its side. We're not going to jeopardize that. Thanks for watching this clip from System Update, our live show that airs every Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on Rumble. You can catch the full nightly shows live or view the backlog of episodes for free on our Rumble page. You can also find full episodes the morning after they air across all major podcasting platforms, including Spotify and Apple. All the information you need is linked below. We hope to see you there.